my shit. Hello. Hey, Lena. We got a hangout. <laughs> we got to get together. We are popping on. My one friend's going to be mad at me because... A, we're late. <laughs> <laughs> and B, I'm going to be like, so we're just going to wait for a few more people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Please share. If you didn't catch us last week, we are oh, talking about I'm supposed to be doing um, this. different generations, same story. So we'll probably <clears throat> recap a little bit um, what we talked about last week, as well as some additional what questions. Up, what up? that we had um so we are steady trying to like figure out all this technology stuff um okay hi guys lena i totally missed out saturday um, on your talk. How was that? How did that go? Hey, Sister April. Hey, hey Miss Rihanna. That's probably not going to work. It's going to be a bad echo. We just have to do it like we did last time. We were trying to figure out how to do a dual Instagram without us both. But you know what we're just going to do? We're just going to do one. So we're going to have to turn the camera and get it together. Um, we here again. Again, again, again. So. Um, oh, that's weird. But. <laughs> So we decided, if you tuned in last week to our live, um, we talked about basically basically how um, the title of our, or our theme is Different Generations, Same Story. And essentially, we just kind of hit on our most recent relationships and our blogs and what encouraged us, inspired us to blog. And we answered some questions. Um, and we just wanted to come back in, go over a few other things um, that we kind of thought of after the mm -hmm. fact. So we thought to just do another live. Why? Because we had nothing else to do. And we showed up. So <laughs> <laughs> here we are. Um, okay. So um, I know one of the questions that was asked last week or should we do like intros again yes let's do intro okay intros again okay <laughs> um so for those that don't know me i am Aaliyah. i am 25 years old um born and raised in st louis missouri by a single mom um, one older sister one older brother single no kids never been married um yeah and that's my background <laughs> Well, why don't I introduce that myself? I forget how to do live. Um, so oh. I am Shalay, Dr. S. Um, for those of you who follow me, if you don't follow me, follow me on at um, Dr. Underscore Shalay on Instagram. Um, while we're figuring all this out, be <laughs> sure this is my friend. Um, <laughs> hey. She said, I feel like I'm driving to a different show. <laughs> <laughs> Sierra just popped on. So my friend Sierra was like, be sure to tell people to share. So please share while we are doing all of this. Um, so I am 47, twice married, 
and divorced. I have a nine-year-old. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, were you born and raised? I mean, oh, I am from North Carolina. <clears throat> Sorry for those of you who are on my IG. I'm trying to figure it out. I don't think it's. Going oh, to it start. didn't start yet. You're supposed to click on. Uh -huh. <laughs> Um, so yes, born and raised in North Carolina, moved here to go to Is my school. screen unlocked? And what I have been, been here for 11 years now. And also a little background. So, Aaliyah and I have both been in what we would call, um, abusive relationships. And that abuse can look different. So, um... I don't think either one of us will say that we have been in a relationship where it was physically abusive, but there was some kind of emotional um, situations that presented themselves. And so as a part of our healing process, we both did blogs. So we both wrote um, our respective blogs and hers is called A Hopeless Romantic. It is still... Oh, no going on right now i think you just released part eight part eight mm -hmm. um, mine was four parts <laughs> i did my last one last week so you can find mine oh, no, on my website um, at about they so could fit in the frame and then what's your link to your blog oh oh my link um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um it is monet's truth dot squarespace.com um she has to keep it in there it should be um is that gonna help t maybe maybe not i don't know um so alia is getting consultations from <laughs> other gurus <laughs> with regards to this so look learn me something and she is figuring that out so what we decided to do was there were a couple of items last week that um, either questions we had, um, questions we want to ask you guys that kind of came up from last week. So one of the questions was kind of about healthy relationships. So how do you either create healthy relationships or maintain healthy relationships? And that was one of the things that we felt like, or at least I felt like we really didn't talk Did about a lot. We talked about, um the questions that people ask but we didn't really go into depth on that one so um feel free while you're watching in addition to sharing um to ask us questions and like i said we're going to ask you questions like for example what are some characteristics that you would say are part of healthy relationships so now that i think we got a little bit of that settled um Aaliyah was going to get started on her oh. thoughts on healthy, <laughs> <laughs> on healthy relationships Okay, fine. Um, I was just trying to make sure we were straight. Nope. Yes, we're on Facebook um, too, Sister Diana. Cool. Thanks, T. Appreciate you. Hey, Sal. Um. <clears throat> so, okay, what are we talking about? Healthy, Healthy relationships. relationships. I missed your whole intro, so I don't even know. <laughs> so, um, some things that I would say would are that are necessary for a healthy relationship would definitely definitely be um, open, honest communication. Uh, that was something that I'll just refer to my last relationship, of course, because it's the most recent. But um, that was something that was wasn't really there. Just to put it simply, um, it was encouraged, and and in the beginning, I felt comfortable enough to be open and honest. But as time passed on, it just became like whenever I shared my feelings, they were always thrown down, or they were. Um, you know, not considered or they were minimized or whatever it was. So that kind of kept me from feeling like safe or secure and being able to be open and honest. So of course that hindered our relationship. Um, so it's just kind of like, if you don't feel that kind of ties into, um, something else that I wrote, but if you don't feel comfortable speaking with someone or sharing your feelings with someone or if they don't respect your your viewpoint or or your feelings or anything like that then that is a sure sign of like this isn't you know an open honest 
um, or a healthy relationship. So um, that's just one thing. And then also, if you guys don't share the same values or standards, that's definitely something that's important for a healthy relationship. Um, if you guys don't value wise counsel together, if you all don't value, um, you know, going to church in itself, um, then that's just a sure sign or it's, it's, you're going to have conflict because of that. Um, and it also will hinder the ideas or how you guys feel about how to raise the kids. So if you don't share the same values, if you don't have the same outlooks, if you're not going the same direction, um, mm -hmm. it's a sure sign that it's likely not a healthy relationship. Um, and then I think that kind of sums up everything I had pretty much. Um, also being able to be accountable to each other. Mm -hmm. So if one person is causing you to compromise or causing you to do something that goes against what you believe or what you value, um, that's not a healthy relationship because if they was living for God or if, especially if it's like a godly relationship or whatever, um, they, if they love God, then they wouldn't dare put you in that type of position to have to compromise. So, yeah. Um, so when I was thinking about what healthy relationships look like or how you can kind of start that process of being in a healthy relationship, I have learned to not limit everything just to like a, a husband and wife or boyfriend, girlfriend or dating relationship. Um, when you think about what it means to be a part of, um, healthy relationships, because if you don't have healthy relationships in general, mm -hmm. you're not going to have a healthy, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, husband, and wife relationship. So when I speak about relationships, I'm speaking in general. So I think in general, the first step um, is to have a healthy love for yourself. Like if you That's don't good. love yourself... <laughs> You, all this stuff that <laughs> Aaliyah just said, oh, well, be out, watch out for this or look out for that or check out. You're not even going to notice that stuff yeah. because either you're going to think you're not worth it or, you know, your self-esteem is low or, you know, you're still dealing with some issues. And so mm -hmm. I think um, that's really one of the awesome things is to consider the importance of loving yourself yeah. and then obviously having a relationship with the Lord um, because and and you know depending on who you're talking to you can have the love the Lord first um, but having a strong relationship with Jesus Christ so that as you are learning to love yourself you are learning to love yourself in a way that he created you yeah understanding that you are you know fearfully and wonderfully made and crafted in his image and all of those good things and then you can go to that next step of loving your neighbor you know loving this other person whether it's a family member a friend a co-worker your kids um or whatever the case may be so i think for me that would be the foundation of any healthy relationship is loving yourself yes. loving god and loving your neighbor Yes, that's yeah. really good. Really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> Loving and then, yourself first is key. Amen. And again, let, we would love to hear from you. What are some things that you would consider are invaluable in healthy relationships? So all of you who are watching, feel yes. free yes, to yes. chime in. Okay, so I hope we prepared the same. <laughs> <laughs> I followed your outline. This is the creative director right here. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Okay, so um, while we wait for uh, comments and things like that, we'll go on to what we were going to talk about next, um, which was habits, insecurities, and red flags. And a good point that she brought up earlier was that um, uh, the, the habits, the insecurities, the red flags are not something that we just see in the other person, but also that we have our own internal um habits and insecurities and red flags that mm -hmm. you know we should be aware of but oftentimes it gets blinded by love 
mm-hmm. or infatuation. Um, and so we kind of just wanted to address some of the things that um, those habits or those insecurities and things that kind of led us into the relationship that we got in. So, um, and again, this will kind of, I don't know what she wrote, but I think <laughs> you guys will see um, based off what we come what we come up with that again we're alike in many ways. We are. And and Marnie mentioned respect is one of those um, important parts of healthy relationships. Liking each other that that right yeah. there is major cuz if you don't like the person, right. That kind of ties in with respect. Um like liking, I think that's something that's kind, that's really overlooked because Oh, boundaries. I was gone. Yes. Communication, liking each other, giving each other grace, yes. boundaries, all and of And I was even great. told that he didn't like me. And I was like, a part of me was like, oh, well, I just, that's okay. No, that's not okay. It's, um, it's not okay. Because we are called to love, but we don't always like. <laughs> so, liking each other is very, very important. Yes. Thank you. Keep it coming. Okay, so some of my habits and securities red flags were that I typically fall for the guy that shows interest in me first. So, um, one thing that I noticed, and I shared this with her once my last relationship ended, was I realized the pattern. And that all the serious relationships that I've had in my life ended the same way. Um, The guy, you know, showed interest in me first and... Essentially, he was charming, he was sweet, he was kind, all these great things. Um, But then once I got into the relationship, I realized that he just didn't fit my standard. He just didn't. Um, <laughs> Them kids, though. We have to do another one on that right. one. Woo, no. <laughs> um, but it, it, it turned out soon in the relationship that the guy didn't fit my standards, that he wasn't who I thought he would be who I thought he was, he had habits that I was like, "Mm, okay, but we can work on that. Um, And that was another one of my downfalls, thinking that I was good enough to change a person or that he loved me enough Mm -hmm. that he would change for me. Um, That was one of the things that kept me in the relationship for as long as I was. And I just think even like now I'm way more cognizant um, of the guys that I give attention to, especially if they show an interest in me first, I I don't, you know, it's weird because they say the he who finds a wife. So I'm like, well, he gotta be the one Mm -hmm. to come to me, (laughs) but I don't know. I'm gonna pick them out this time. We gonna see how that work. But, um, that was definitely one of my, again, bad habits and insecurities that led me into the relationship that I was in. And then also, um all of my life I've been a people pleaser Mm -hmm. so that really contributed to the fact that I was willing to do whatever you know it took in order for me to maintain this relationship to keep it um to make sure that he felt okay I always put other people's feelings before my own Mm -hmm. and that led me again to stay in a relationship um again not just my most previous one but the one before that one as well it caused me to stay in that one for a long time um and again it was just over time it was emotionally and mentally damaging because I was I felt like I was compromising and sacrificing so much but I wasn't getting anything in return Mm -hmm. um and then also I don't like confrontation so whenever there is a disagreement or if I just don't want to argue I'm just going to look we're gonna do it your way I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not going to speak on how I feel. I'm not going to, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not confrontational. So if if I have a feeling that I know how you're going to respond to something or that this is going to lead to an argument, I'm just not going to say it. And that was something that I had to learn, um, of course, by trial and error. Mm-hmm. But definitely now I'm just like, I'm if if it don't sit well with me, if I don't agree... Or if I have, you know, mixed feelings about it, I'm going to speak on it because it's just 